Hope you like my new look. This is my glasses with my sunglasses precariously balanced over the top. Got to save up for a pair of sunglasses, prescription sunglasses. That's what I need, prescription sunglasses. We're on our way at last to Bohe Dulang and that is the marine park. Why it's so special is that you can't normally go there and it's only because of the rally we're allowed to go there at all and anchor. Not quite sure for how long we're going to be there but at least we know we will be there until the 25th at the most so that's the 19th, so that's six days, potentially six days in this park. Ooh. Two dive trips, Mabul and Sipadan. Anyway, we should be there in the next couple of hours or so. I'm making bread and I've got both lines out, but so far I haven't seen a single fish or any action in the sea. So as we get a bit closer, we're gonna to have to bring them in because if I'm found to be fishing in a marine park, I'll get thrown in jail. Let's see how it goes. which meant I had to take my uh, fishing line in. So we have the yo-yo out with the really excellent lure from Red Sea Days. Something snapped at it but didn't bite and I caught three pieces of plastic. So at least I'm cleaning the ocean. Anyway, this scenery now as we're getting towards the main area that we wanted to come while we were here is just stunning. It reminds me of two places. It reminds me of the Maldives and of the Anambas Islands. Incredible blues, just gorgeous beaches, uh, great coral areas and sandbars, and just us chickens here. The other thing it reminds me of is Pee Pee. If anyone's been to Pee Pee Lee in um, Thailand, that's where they filmed the beach, the famous one. Uh, it has a similar feel to it. There's sort of very high cliffs, and inside there's this beautiful lagoon so that's what it's looking like at the moment but much nicer water than than round pee pee much prettier Well, it may be a rather splendid marine park, but that doesn't stop the rubbish from being swept through from elsewhere. And we wake up in the morning to this, which is not a pleasant sight. Now we have seen and we've commented on the number of plastic bottles we see washed up on beaches. Uh, here they have a little beach, but obviously at high water, when the water comes up, it picks up those plastic bottles and brings them back into the sea. So today we are going to do something about this. Can you take the, uh, the, the engine, Liz? Today we are on Liz's magical mystery tour. She's taken the tiller whilst I kick back and do some filming and 
get driven around, which is a rarity, because it's normally me that does it. But it's good to see Liz there. She hasn't got the kill cord around her wrist though, have you? Yeah, where is it? Naughty girl. We are actually contravening the rules and regulations of uh, dinging around the marine park. That is, we're supposed to stay within sight of ESCOM. So we've been a bit naughty, we've come outside. We should probably turn around and go back. But um, it was interesting seeing that stilted house up there with all the young children waving. But as Liz pointed out, uh, if pirates were to come and bribe the locals for information, you live somewhere like that and they paid you a rich price for information on big fat white westerners to be kidnapped, you'd give that information away, wouldn't you? I don't know. Maybe you wouldn't. They seem very nice and friendly though. This is Magical Mystery Tours have now taken us to uh, the corner of a little cut through from where the boats are anchored just over the hill there and we've got these little houses and um, very friendly local people lots of waving children and you can see here obviously all on stilts behind me I will give you a decent close-up of that in a minute um, the dad with two kids sitting on the step there waving and they've got hundreds and hundreds of jerry cans here and I presume that's water I suppose um, because where else are they going to get their water from I don't know. Oh look, there's a white-bellied sea eagle up there. So we've just uh, come to the next little hut. More children waving at us. And we think this is a shop. One of the things we're curious to know is why these people are allowed to live here if this is a marine park. Um, maybe uh, they were here before this was declared a marine park? Don't know. We're curious to know. But that was very definitely a shop and lots of uh, very friendly, happy local people giving us big waves and smiles. It's always good to see, isn't it? I wonder where Liz's Magical Mystery Tours are going to take us next. Right, I don't know if you heard that. We're going for a swim back at the boat. Yeah. Well, it was a nice little recce. That was really the idea of uh, this morning, was just have a little recce. Uh, we don't want to go too far, what with the whole security thing and not telling ESCOM where we're going. Maybe next time we can do a bigger exploration and maybe get a few boats together. This evening it is potluck for the ESCOM guys. All the uh, boats have got together, we've knocked up a few treats and surprises in the galley and uh, we've come ashore onto the end of the jetty here to watch the sunset, have a few beers and uh, fill our tummies with curry and rice and whatever else is on offer. How's it done? Yes sir. How are you? Fine, thank you. you Welcome to Malaysia. Welcome to Sampurna. <laughs> Yesterday when we arrived, we were looking over at the beach and thinking, oh, we've got to go over there, and that's where we wanted to have our potluck. But there was so much rubbish on it, we thought, came up with another idea, let's do a beach cleanup. So the idea was today, come over and do the cleanup. But this morning when we woke up, it was high tide, I and mean, it was a really high tide, that that blue house over there was up to the gunnels. Uh, and everything that had been on the beach was now in the sea and we had a sea of plastic and crap all around the boats which was very disappointing when you consider the area that we're in. 
A little bit more, we looked and we realised that we weren't going to have a low tide um, to do the potluck, but we decided we'd still, we'd, we'd still do the clean-up at about lunchtime. But everything that had come out off the beach remained off the beach, so the beach is quite clean now. The sea has done it, the job for us. And now all the rubbish has disappeared and no idea where it's going to end up. We'll find out tomorrow. We are having our potluck. Everybody's brought a little bit of food. <laughs> some knives and plates and we've got a lot more people from ESCOM than we anticipated <laughs> as we thought might happen. We were catering for six but a lot more have turned up and the idea is we get to meet them and talk about what they're doing and uh, say hello and share a bit of food together and we're doing that on the dock right next to the, the station that the tourists come to and then they take their trips either by boat or they go up the mountain to get the view from the top. So that's where we are now. We're going to watch a lovely sunset, hopefully. Well, this is... Oh, I don't know what day it is. Jamie has left the boat because he is going on a proper dive, scuba dive to the island of Mabul. He'll be away all day. Yeah, I've got the place to myself. What shall I do? <laughs> I don't know. And this morning, we don't have anywhere near the amount of crap in the water that was floating about yesterday. Phewee! Well, if that didn't wake you up, then you must be comatose. And we've been doing 30 knots through there, and a lot of it through very shallow water. We're looking over the side, and you can see the bottom quite clearly. I just hope this guy knows that we're on a spring high water at the moment because the journey back could be a bit more dangerous. It was such a high tide it took everything off the beach uh, in the night and then yesterday morning when it was all floating in the sea it was wafted off to its next destination. We're at the town of Semporna and this is where we come to pick up our dive gear, uh, get measured up and then we're going to be going out in that super fast boat to Mabul, which is an island, and that's at least an hour away. I don't know what I'm going to do. There's a possibility I might be able to climb up to the top of the mountain. There's a couple of others who want to do that. Yesterday it was closed because the rain had been pretty bad. We'll find out. This is probably going to be one of the last bits of clips from the dive trip. Unfortunately, I don't have my GoPro camera case. Maybe some of these guys can provide some footage, which I'll do as a little overlay. I want to take the kayak as far a kayak as far as I can along the coast here. I'll definitely do that if nothing else is happening. There is also a possibility a couple of boats are gonna dingers are gonna ding across the bay. So I don't know what I'll do. Could be any of those things, could be no, none of them. I could just lie around and read all day. But I'm free and I can do anything. Hope you're having such a good day too. We are at Mabul, my first visit and uh, really looking forward to this. The water looks crystal clear and uh, can just keep fingers crossed and think this is going to be the best dive yet. So that was, as dives go, amazing. It was really, really good. And what was interesting was that uh, down in the water were a whole load of houses, I suppose you call them, just made up of timber framework, designed specifically to encourage coral growth. But not just that, the, uh, the fish were loving it as well. And the first thing we saw was a huge rope net, I suppose it was, uh, which went up to the surface. And inside was a massive grouper and I mean I've never seen a grouper this big I mean it was from here to that tree enormous 
And me being stupid thought, well, that's not very nice. You can't keep grouper locked up like that just for the tourists. Well, it turns out that none of the fish are trapped in these funny cage type uh, constructions. They're all free to swim around. And of course, they're mainly there to encourage the growth of coral, but uh, the fish loved it. And big, big fish, very big fish. Uh, barracuda, saw another really big barracuda, almost as big as the one we caught actually. Kim, how are you finding the dive so far? Oh, it's bloody awful. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was the best dive. This one was the best. It's all the most stuff. Been most excellent, thank you. Yes, uh, an absolute treat. Three dives, uh, many fish that I've never seen before in Hawaii and uh, good time. Sharon, just quickly, yeah. you saw something in particular down there that you've never seen before. What was that? The dunny! And I even got a photo to prove it. The only thing I didn't do was sit on it. <laughs> what I was interested to see was that as we took the boat around to uh, the dive, the first dive spot, it wasn't actually on Marbul, it was on the next island. Now these little islands are little strips of sand and then the communities have been built on stilted houses out into the sea because there is so much reef here. Uh, I imagine a lot of these are for the tourism industry, for the dive industry, um, but of course there's got to be residents here as well. So I've just walked through the island, a little network of corridors and corrugated walls uh, out to one part of the island. I just wanted to show you A, the vista out across sea, and uh, a very interesting construction over there, which used to be an old oil rig, which has been turned into a hotel. But just have a look at these waters and the mainland behind the mountain range. It's just so beautiful, it really is. Have a look at this. Unreal.